Mr. Speaker, Statistics Canada has reported Alberta in 2015 lost 51,000 full-time jobs, the worst loss since 1982 recession. Alberta's unemployment rate has almost doubled to over 77 percent. And the layoffs have continued, in large part in the resource sector. The huge majority of these are well-paid professional jobs impacting middle-class families. The number of Albertans receiving EI has doubled in just one year, from over 31,000 to more than 62,000. The very purpose of employment insurance is to assist workers who paid into the program when they lose their job through no fault of their own. Regrettably, over several terms of Liberal and Conservative governments, changes have been made not to the obligation to pay into EI, but rather to limit access to the fund. We've been told that only four out of ten workers who pay into the system are qualified to file claims. In a letter to the Finance Minister, Gil McGowan, President of the Alberta Federation of Labour, pointed out that only 37% of employed Albertans qualify for EI benefits. Alberta workers must work 630 hours to qualify, compared to 420 hours in Newfoundland and Labrador. It may be noted both regions are experiencing significant job losses in the resource sector. Mr. McGowan also expressed concerns that over the past decade, accessibility by Canadian workers to EI benefits declined from 50 to 38 percent. He reminded the minister that they campaigned promising EI reforms and respectfully suggests unemployed Canadians can't wait a year for a review. As my colleague, the MP for Trois-Rivières, pointed out, Surely no one in this place would agree that only 4 out of 10 Canadians should qualify for universal health insurance. Then why support only a small percentage who pay into EI to claim? He also reminded us of past misappropriations of the EI fund to pay down deficits. Employment insurance has historically offered greater benefits to the jobless in regions the most economically challenged. Benefits have been less generous to workers in Alberta or Ontario who are prospering. There's growing support for reform of the program to establish a single, universal, national standard for access to claims. During the election, the Liberals committed to support this change and now say they're studying the program. We prefer an action verb. Here, here. But increased access to, work, to workers, including those hard hit in Alberta with the massive cuts in the resource sector, could easily be expedited in advance of a complete overhaul of the system. As pointed out in a recent Globe and Mail editorial, Quick action was taken in 2009 in response to that economic crisis. Why not now? In response to the significant downturn in Alberta's economy, both Alberta's Premier Notley and Edmonton's Mayor Iveson have called on this government to intervene to revise EI eligibility rules to ensure more equitable access by unemployed Alberta workers. The Premier has request, requested this government to make two adjustments to the EI program. One, to offer a longer period of EI benefits for Alberta workers. Two, require a shorter period of eligibility for Alberta workers in line with other Canadian workers. Mayor Iveson, in a letter February 16th to the Finance Minister, raised concerns with the current eligibility rules. In quotes, he said, which places the unemployed in our city at a considerable disadvantage in accessing the EI program and exacerbates the personal and social distress associated with job loss. Mr. Speaker, I received a letter just today from the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers who told me that their younger members are experiencing extended periods of unemployment as previously not heard of and are struggling to make ends meet. An immediate extension of EI benefits and a lowering of the eligibility hours in Alberta would certainly help in relieving stress and anxiety, not to mention increased divorce and family breakdowns. This is a serious matter, Mr. Speaker, requiring action. Yes, some new jobs have been created, but by and large, they've been part-time positions paying minimum wage. As my colleagues have pointed out, part-time employment creates a major disadvantage for workers in accumulating working hours. This must be considered. Would Alberta workers, as with all Canadian workers, prefer a job? Absolutely. Are they welcoming the promised infusion of dollars for infrastructure and housing projects? Yes. But in the meanwhile, federal action is needed to address the inequity in assessing EI, accessing EI, and the distress for families who've been laid off through no fault of their own. So Mr. Speaker, in summation, we've heard all throughout this debate today that the Liberal government is thinking, consulting, proposing, maybe sometime in the future will bring forward a reform of EI. But at this very moment, we have workers across this country, and certainly also in my province of Alberta, 
who are suffering through no fault of their own. And they, many of them have been working in the resource sector, which has been filling the coffers of the federal and provincial governments across this country. I think, my Premier thinks, my Mayor thinks, um, the workers of Alberta think, that it's time that the government stepped forward, took expeditious action to treat Alberta workers who have worked hard, who have contributed for many years to the EI fund, that they deserve a break, just like occurred in 2009. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.